everyone, we are in the home stretch. <laughs> and I'll just say maybe we've saved the best for last. Welcome to our session on user-centered design, the second uh, session that's been uh, on that topic. And we have two full papers and two short papers. So the way it works, if you haven't figured it out yet, is uh, the full papers have 30 minutes and we'll plan for 20 to 25 a talk and then some time for questions. And the short papers have 15 minutes, 10 for talk, five for questions, perhaps. But anyway, um, so without further ado, I'm happy to welcome our first speaker who is uh, Maria Jesus, and she is presenting Teacher in the Loop, Customizing Multimodal Learning Analytics for Blended Learning. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, <clears throat> hello everybody. If at some point my voice breaks, we will catch up with Luis, but hopefully everything will work. So, um, uh, this is a work that has been done in collaboration with the uh, University of Tallinn and Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne and also the University of Valladolid. And uh, well, what I would like to present you here is the basically the two sides or two of the men or the sides that have been discussed during these days, like the user involvement, the relevance that it may have in order to have a final adoption, and also alternative ways in order to collect data, as we have been seeing today in the session about multimodal learning analytics. So I like this. Uh, uh, idea that um, some colleagues were pushing about learning that somehow we are too attached to this feeling like okay digital parts of learning and all of this stuff but these guys were saying okay yeah you know learning is mainly happening in the physical world and the digital part of it is yeah it's increasingly more um, present but it's not the main part so it also has a number of connotations because obviously if this part of learning is so happening in the physical world, then what are we doing not only looking sometimes at the digital part of it? So in order to have a more holistic and more general view, it's necessary to bring a little bit of evidence from both sides. Because otherwise what will happen is that in many ALA situations we are focusing on the digital. So you have, we have already lost a huge part of the slide and then indeed what we look is at the logs and what we have is a simplified view of the whole situation. So in the learn, learning a scenario like this one, if we try to take advantage of multimodal learning analytics, it could bring us some alternative ways in order to know what is happening in this learning activity. And it will not be perfect. It will be quite simplified in any case, but at least may, we may have some additional information about what happened during the process. So pros and cons, multimodal learning analytics could be very promising, but at the same time, it's quite difficult to adapt it to different cases. So many times it's a lab scenario, what, um, what, uh, what it can be applied or what it, what it was designed for. So what do we do? So the learning contexts are different. So what could be relevant for one scenario is not relevant for another. The data sources that we may have in one, they are not present in the other case, so what can we do? So an alternative would be like, okay, if we bring users in order to enable us, enable them to adopt uh, this solution, it could simplify a little bit the problem because they could have personalized it to the specific needs and they could better understand what is behind the solution and what this solution could bring to them. So there are already a number of studies in the literature, if we look at uh, some recent uh, literature reviews, that uh, they are saying, okay, so yeah, so co-design is cool, participatory design, we had already, indeed these days, some sessions about user involvement and also the workshops about it. So yeah, there is some kind of movement in the part of the design. There are also quite a number of people that they are putting the, the, the final users in the fact of the, in the part of the assessment. And especially what they are doing is like sometimes focusing only in the usability. But well, what happens with the development? If we put also the users in that size that they are able to uh, specify what they want to obtain and how we could also better tailor their needs. So what we propose in this, process, in this paper is a customization process that is nothing super fancy, it's just in order to guide a little bit this uh, adaptation. So what we have here is the end user that in our case is the teacher. We have an expert on MMLA and we have finally the MMLA solution. So what do we want to do here? So first of all, in order to 
uh, adopt one solution, either you understand it or then maybe you, you cannot do anything about it. So what we want to, hear, to do here is enable the discussion between the expert and the teacher so that they can better understand what is behind this um, uh, LA proposal. So then once you know what you can retrieve, so let's try to pose a question. So what the teacher wants to know in this kind of context, because knowing the question, then we will see whether we can answer it. So once we know the question, then what we can reflect is about, okay, so how is my scenario? What are the constraints of my scenario? And can I retrieve anything relevant from it? So this is also part where the expert on MMLA could also contribute quite a lot, trying to identify alternative solutions, trying to present what are the limitations of the current one. And thanks to this conversation then, both the scenario and the MMLA solution can be refined in order to, to, to satisfy the needs of the user. So the methodology that we have been following here was that trying to answer this research question. So basically, what is the added value that this personalization could bring for the teacher? So what we did was, okay, even if uh, the teacher in our case was involved in the design and the deployment of the MMLA solution and in the assessment, in this paper, we are focusing especially in this deployment phase. And uh, so we run two case studies. In this case, these uh, studies were um, in blended CSL scenarios that uh, took place in higher education. So basically here, <coughs> the MMLA solution that we wanted to adapt was, uh, was ambition in order to compare whether the teacher decisions at the same time were or not accomplished during the enactment. So basically the MMLA solution was, run, was like distributing some warnings whenever something was not working as expected. So these uh, uh, learning activities were a little bit tricky in terms of, uh, in terms of monitoring. So for the teachers, uh, in one of the scenarios, there were many activities that were interrelated. So if something was, fully, uh, was failing, then maybe the whole script was failing uh, afterwards. And in the other case, there were too many students that was basically quite complicated to follow them and to understand what they were doing during the sessions. And since the learning context in terms of the digital part, the digital support that they were using was quite distributed, it was a distributed learning environment, if we could imagine 150 students in your room in different sessions that they were using a number of uh, digital um, files like Google Docs or even Moodle, like they got up to 300 elements. If you need to go one by one checking what is happening is basically impossible to do it on time. Because they, so these activities were taking more or less between three and four weeks, so they needed to catch up and to know whether something needed to be regulated. So. Given the complexity of these studies, what, uh, what we did was, in terms of uh, answering our research question, was compiling information from the teachers, the researcher that was observing both the design sessions and also the, <coughs> the enactment, the students that were providing us information also, and also the information from the learning tools. So we use different techniques in order to gather the information, and we focus on specifically five topics that could let us understand our research questions. So first we were focusing on the performance on the MMLA solution. There was really an improvement thanks to the personalization. And then we were trying to understand in a more qualitative way whether these results were improving the novelty, the usefulness, whether the teacher effort was, uh, was increasing or not, and what was the impact in terms of sense of agency and adoption. So a bit about the case study. So this was more or less the workflow that we followed. The teacher was designing the learning activities that they wanted to put in practice. We were customizing together the MMLA solution. Then we went to the classroom, we enacted it, and then finally we tried to assess with the, with the teacher what was the added value of the MMLA solution. So the initial uh, process that I was presenting uh, was divided in two sessions in our, in our situation. So in the first one, we passed some information to the teacher in order to let him or let her know what was, uh, what was the, the solution about. And so and in order to guide a little bit the customization, so what kind of things they could, uh, they could adapt. And then we were asking them, okay, so come to your question, tell us what you want to check in your sessions. And uh, thanks to that, then the teacher was activity per activity specifying, okay, in this activity, this is uh, uh, obligatory to, for the students to participate. I want them to be uh, collaborating. 
<coughs> these resources are optional, these other ones are mandatory. So they were trying to specify each one of the decisions of the design, whether they were like guidance or they were mandatory so that we needed to verify that it was accomplished. In the second session, like taking into consideration what the teacher wanted to know, the researcher was thinking, okay, so then if you want to, do, to know whether all the students are participating and you are only taking the information from the digital context, maybe it is not going to be very useful. So you, you may lose a lot of information. So what if you gather some information about the physical part of the story? So that was motivating the teacher to decide, okay, so I'm going to have some questions for the, from the students to understand what they are doing in the collaborative uh, activities. I'm going to check whether they are participating, whether they are attending to the face-to-face um, -face session. So apart from the digital part that was the initial um, configuration of the um, learning analytics solution, we moved to a multimodal one, thanks to those uh, preferences of the teacher. So once all uh, this uh, design was ready, we put it in practice, we implemented it through a number of, uh, of tools that we were, uh, we were using for the distributed learning environment, and we reached the, cl the, uh, the classroom. So now, we had three scenarios. We had the teacher by themselves, what they could do. We could have the basic MMLA detector that could have given us a number of uh, relevant data, and we had the customized solution. And what we tried to understand here was like, okay, what is the added value? So if we compare these three, what are we going to get? Is it worth it or not to do all this kind of process? So the teacher detector, basically what we were modeling was that for the teacher, the practice was no news, gold news. So if the, the students or nobody's complaining about the problem, everything is working like a charm because they could not co uh, go with something much more elaborated. So from time to time they were checking resources, but it was difficult for them. So the basic MMLA detector was, basic, was using just the digital information. So logs from the platforms that were part of the uh, distributed learning environment. And the customized version is that the one that the teacher was preparing according to their needs. So then uh, for each one of the activities, what we did was, okay, we were extracting the conditions that the teacher wanted to check, and then we had a number of checkpoints. So for instance, in the first one, we had individual participation. So if there were 15 students, 15 checks that we needed to verify. If there, was collaborate, uh, there were a number of groups that we had to collaborate, so for each number of group, we were verifying things. So for instance, in this case, we came with 27 uh, condition checks. We took the evidence that the teacher was suggesting, and we came out with one problem. So what happened with this problem? So we realized that, okay, in 26, uh, 26 of the cases, our predictor or detector was fine, but the other one was a false positive. So with all this information, at the end, what we tried to do was to elaborate a little bit more on the performance. So we were trying to check how often the, the problems were appearing in the cases. We were trying to understand whether uh, the solution was accurate, what was the sensitivity, in the sensitivity specificity, and F1 score. So um, yes, it was just in order to let you a little bit understand how we were quantifying the things. So in terms of the findings that we got was that, okay, what about the performance? If we took the teacher by themselves and we compare what was the added value with the basic detector and the customized one, we realized that the basic detector even was less accurate than the teacher. So we are trying sometimes to provide LA solutions and then we realized that the teacher was much more uh, aware of what was happening than what we could provide them. <clears throat> While in the customized one, in terms of accuracy, we were and also so, what was the issue? So in these cases, even if they were quite tricky in terms of monitoring, then there were not so many problems. So that's why the teacher detector was so accurate because they were assuming that everything was uh, going fine and it was the case. But if we think about how uh, we are getting in terms of sensitivity, then the problems appear because the teachers, they were not able to detect the few problems that were emerging during the scenario. And also that's why a specificity and F1 were also a little bit conditioned. So in this case, we would say, okay, we were initially some years ago trying to present a solution to teachers about uh, <laughs> learning analytics. And then if we compare what the teacher could do and what we were, were adding, it was not really a big thing. So more things in terms of novelty, usefulness, and meaningfulness. So 
uh, the part that we were really getting some positive feedback was that, okay, maybe the um, MMLA solutions, they were not uh, providing a huge difference in terms of accuracy or awareness of what the teacher had in mind. <clears throat> but the point was that they were much more sure about what was happening there. So we were providing data that they didn't know because they couldn't compile it by themselves. Uh, for them it was useful because they were much more relaxed, so they were uh, facing the new activities and they knew, okay, so things are working, that's fine, I can go there much more uh, confident. And the information, since we were trying to provide data, answering their questions, for them it was meaningful. And uh, then the data that we were providing, it was also based on the learning design. So for them it was much more easy to interpret what was happening and to make some regulator <coughs> regulatory uh, measures in order to fix the few things that appear. Uh, in terms of teacher effort, so we were pushing them in order to uh, customize the solution. So we were asking them, okay, so uh, this extra time that you were devoting, was it too hard? And uh, basically what they told us is like, okay, what is hard is doing the learning design. So it was taking us quite a lot of time in order to configure the whole activity that we wanted to do. But So finally just doing the customization was not so hard because all the design was in your mind. So it was like deciding, okay, for each one of these decisions that I made, what I want to check. And uh, the added value came here in terms of the effort that uh, they were saving because since they had this kind of solution, they had <clears throat> to devote less time to monitoring because they didn't have to go through the different resources that were available or to check their students. <clears throat> and also, uh, the, thing that, the time that they were saving in terms of checking all the, all the resources was devoted in order to take some measures. So they could address directly their students and fix what was happening in the middle. Uh, regarding the sense of agency, it's a little bit connected to what I was doing and saying before. This uh, um, fact that we were raising a little bit awareness, that they were much more confident about their gut, so what they were imagining that it was going to happen. In. And going through them and the um, customization process was helping them in order to raise the transparency, trust, and sense of agency because they knew whether the data was meaningful or not for their case. So it was really enough information in order to support the assumptions that they were getting. And uh, <clears throat> regarding the adoption, obviously this was an MMLA solution that they couldn't afterwards bring with them uh, in their own practice. But what we realized that it was that it was changing their practice. So once they knew that, okay, if I think about learning analytics and what it could bring me, then I could change a number of things uh, in my designs in order to be much more aware of what is happening. So conclusions. Just a wrap up, so what we were presenting here was not really a MMLA solution. What we wanted to present is the fact that, okay, we may need to customize or let our users customize what they want to do regarding learning analytics and to say a word. And we were providing a method in order to quantify the added value that it could bring to the teacher. Um, these ideas were put in practice in a couple of case studies. And if, would I, if I would have to tell you what I learned through this process would be first, <clears throat> if you want to have a realistic view of what is happening in blended learning, try to go for a more multimodal situation. It doesn't mean that you need to have a room full of sensors. You may have a teacher taking some observations. You may have some questionnaires from the students trying to tell you what they were doing so that you may have different sources of data that could help you to triangulate and to better understand the learning situation. Um, the other thing is that put the users in the loop. So if you let them uh, adapt the solutions to what they need, you may have indeed many more chances in order to increase the chances of, of adoption. That at the end somehow is what we want to do, not just to create new things and then seeing how they are getting some dust because nobody even wants to, to touch them. And the other final thing would be like try to assess what is the added value because we realized with our own MMLA solution, the original one, that we were not helping so much. So we need to go there and verify from the quantitative and qualitative per perspective whether we are bringing something or not. And for that, 
I would say that it would be necessary to combine two different perspectives. So we, would, we could go for something more subjective and, uh, and check something like the framework that uh, Marian was, uh, was proposing in order to assess what is the added value for the, for the final users, but also to try to see whether or LA solutions in terms of diagnostics, they are really improving what the users already know. So that's all, folks. Uh, your research question started out with what's the added value of personalized NLA uh, solution for the teacher. You've shown some quotes by teaching staff that uh, basically um, advocate at least its benefit, but do you feel that the added value has been sufficiently proven in that sense or is more research still needed on that? Um, I would say that, uh, so for instance, we were not using a predefined framework that we could validate against other proposals. And what I think is that, yeah, it would be necessary to further understand what is the added value, but I think that what uh, we would need to do is to adopt this mindset in order to verify what is the added value of a solution from the very beginning. So even with mockups, even at design time, try to understand, okay, this thing that I'm bringing you, is it going to contribute to your, uh, to your practice, or, or we are not going to, to do anything. So this, this is what I would say that would be like the key point, not so much like the added value of the proposal itself, that for sure it would require a lot of uh, improvement and a lot of refinement in order to bring it to the final classroom and make it uh, available for everybody. Thank you. Yeah, Katarina. Oh, okay. Nice work. I love your work. Very good work. Uh, I have two questions. One is, uh, did you try to see what learning analytics together with the teacher might be relevant? Like, can you tell us if you managed to see how you can detect what is relevant from their standpoint of view? And the second question is like, um, what will be the challenges to scale this process? You know, you have a small study, but what will be the challenges if we want to implement it in the schools because we keep talking and putting learning analytics into focus, but it hasn't been scaled much into the educational system. So, thank you, Katerina. So, for the first question regarding what was relevant for the teachers, that's why we were asking them in advance what they wanted to know. So, because otherwise, we could be like proposing something that was out of scope. So, we asked them what they wanted to check in the sessions, and then we asked them, okay, before receiving our, uh, our report, we were asking them, what do you know about the session? So tell me, what, uh, what kind of problems were, were popping up? And then we were, uh, we were trying to assess with them what was more relevant. And I think that the main problem for them was to envision what was the impact of the current situation in the future. Because you may understand or you may know what is happening, but then you don't have this uh, ability to compute all the things that, are, that, are, um, that happened before and that, that are going on now in order to see what will happen in for weeks, so this means that uh, then we will be able to run the, non the, ne the last activity or not. So this could be the most um, uh, significant part for the teachers. And the other thing about the scalability, I think that my, my solution was not uh, an option in order to be fix uh, fixing this problem. So we couldn't bring it to the classroom as it was. From my perspective, I think that this is a thing that needs to be taken into consideration from design. So it should be user involvement from the very beginning in order to create solutions that they can take afterwards to, uh, and, and bring it to the, to the classroom. And somehow, most of us here, we are researchers. We are not um, software companies. So we may also need to think about this need of uh, 
uh, alignment or a connection with the, with, the, with the companies, the industry, in order to transfer our knowledge and make it, uh, put it to the level where finally people can adopt it. Well, thank you. I, I really enjoyed this having a teacher in the loop. Uh, so I wonder what are your thoughts about uh, every teacher? They might have their own set of uh, requirements. They want to do it this way, right? So you've, you you mentioned about you, your current study is not for the scale, and it should be taken into account uh, for the consideration. But what are your thoughts about if we want all the teachers to be involved? And, but each one of them have their own way of conducting a blended uh, classrooms um, instructions. Then, and how do we how do we scale? I would say that, for instance, the other day when we were discussing in the MLA workshop, this idea came to your mind. So how we could think about this and uh, having situations where you may have Google or solutions where really you can start um, configuring the whole thing. Like, okay, what are your questions? Do you want to focus on satisfaction? Do you want to focus on learning gains? Do you want to focus on, um, I don't know. So any different aspect that you want to check uh, in, the, in the classroom. And then you can be like uh, recommending what kind of thing you can do afterwards. Like, okay, if you want to do this, this could be a good tool in order to help you. If you want to do the, uh, if you focus into more behavioral stuff, this set of tools could be helpful. So, some of the things that uh, are necessary in order to reach the final uh, classroom is that one, that teachers, they are not aware of the 1,000 million tools that are around and whether they are reliable or not. Mm -hmm. So I, would, I think that first it would be a, a matter of transferring our knowledge to the, to the teachers in order to reduce the barrier, the adoption barrier that they may uh, find over there. Right, because the danger could be ended up create another course management systems that with the thousands thousands of uh, features that uh, teachers may not use, right? Thank you, Stephanie. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Sakina Al Haddad. First time at LAC, so just thought to <laughs> um, introduce myself. I'm a lecturer uh, from Griffith University, that's in Brisbane, um, Australia. And today I'm talking on behalf of uh, really the collective team um, here. And I've been really privileged in being able to 